Hello and welcome back to Tidbit of Torah. As it is raining outside and it feels like winter is coming in, I'm reminded of this week's Torah portion, Parshat Noach, with all the rains and the destruction that comes through water in the story of the flood. But the part that's sticking with me this morning is the part when Noah and his family leave the ark. What's interesting in the text of Genesis that we read is that you'd think that after so much time cooped up in the ark, so much rain, finally when the waters stop, when the dove returns, when the dry land appears, you'd think Noah would just rush out of the ark. Imagine being on a days and days long cruise or plane ride and you're just so eager to stretch your legs and get out in the world. But that's not what happened. Noah doesn't run. God has to say to Noah, Seh, leave, go with your wife, who the Midrash knows as Nama, and your family and the animals. Go, inhabit the earth, be fertile, be happy, live. Um, God has to instruct Noah to go, to leave the comfort of the ark. And on one hand, that seems silly. Why wouldn't he would just want to run out and go? On the other hand, we think about the trauma and destruction that Noah has been through. Of course, he was hesitant to leave the ark, to leave the nest, to leave the comfort, uh, to re-enter into the world, which was a bit of a graveyard of everything and everyone he's known. He's probably feeling scared. He's probably feeling PTSD. He's Who knows what he might be feeling and what his family might be feeling at that time. And so what does Noah do? He leaves the ark and he builds an altar to God. And after he does that, we have the beautiful scene in which a keshet, which means bow, or we interpret as rainbow, um, appears. And so in order for Noah to move forward, he needs to know that he's not alone that his family is there and that God's presence is there and that there's a commitment to not be a world of destruction anymore, but a world of growth and healing. And after Noah sees this beautiful breed, this beautiful sign of God, of the covenant um, and hope for the future, Noah does something extraordinary. He begins to plant. He becomes an ish ha'adama, a man of the soil and he plants, he plants a vineyard. And unfortunately we see the signs of his, uh, of his unsteady state and perhaps his PTSD. Um, and uh, he becomes drunk and he exposes himself and we see the challenges of it, which as someone so, so powerfully put in my Torah study group uh, a couple days ago, like, of course, maybe we'd be more concerned if he wasn't disturbed by the experience of everything he's gone to, that that shows that he is human and righteous and compassionate and the kind of comforter that he's described when he is born uh, by, by his father. I want to focus on the planting for a second. All of us face unbelievable loss in our lives in different dimensions. Um, and we have both on an individual level and a societal level, whether it's post October 7th, whether it's a loss in your family, whether it's moving forward after a difficult election when the person you backed perhaps doesn't win. And we have to fig find a place in our lives to plant, whether that's volunteering at an organization, whether that's investing in relationships or communities that you care about, whether that's literally going outside when the time is right in the season and planting a vegetable garden or donating food to people who need it. Um, but I think that image of Noah as the planter after all the things that he's been through all the loss and destruction is a really powerful symbol for us in our times. And so as we go forward in our lives, I invite us to think about what does it mean to be a person of the soil, planting seeds for the future, knowing that the past has been difficult and we carry that with us, and yet being able to find an opportunity to give back, to plant and move forward. I want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. I hope you can find a rainbow or at least some sunshine amidst all the rain around.